Well, folks, we've gone on quite the tour for these non League to Legend match day vlogs. We've done Peterborough Sports, we've done Preston, we went to Tottenham, Barcelona, we've been over to Juventus and Pennebont as well off the back of the Twitch saves. But today is the final match day vlog of the season. It's Liverpool's final home game of the season. Uh, it's Liverpool versus Aston Villa. That's Anfield behind me. And I need to go and find the club shop, which I think is going to be around here. Looking at the signage, we've got the LFC Superstore and Stadium Tours, 200 metres in this direction. Don't think I need the cop bar. Don't think I've got time to get into the Liverpool Museum today. What we are going to do is have our traditional mooch around in the club shop, which will be super duper. There it is, look. One club shop, one Bill Shankly statue as well. We'll see it very quietly around these parts, but I did finish above him in the Hall of Fame. It was just Bob Paisley I didn't catch. By the way, it's still 90 minutes until kickoff, and it is absolutely heaving here. This is, uh, it's not quite as busy as it was in Barcelona, but I think that aside, this is the busiest any stadium has been this far before kickoff. We've got a stage over here with a big screen above it. Looks like there's a band on the stage and then a load of push chairs because they're sponsored by, I guess, a push chair company. Got another statue over here. So there's our Bob Paisley statue. He was my big rival that we never quite caught. And here is the champion's wall with a list of uh, all the bits and bobs that they've won over the years. They're saving a few quid on updating that this year at least. And then I think round here is the shop. Yeah, store main entrance, so it's round here. There's not really anything in particular I'm looking for in the shop. I've already got my replica shirt that I got as part of the series. But we'll have a little look to see what else is in here. See if we can find some fun goodies. So there we have the Liverpool FC store. And it's a big one, goodness me. This is another multi-floor, enormous shopping extravaganza, similar to what we saw at Spurs and Barcelona earlier in the season. This is massive. And when I guess, last game of the season, are they selling these shirts off cheap? I mean, I've got one already. I don't need them. We've got an escalator and a football club, club shop. Tells you there what we've got and where in here. We'll stay on the ground floor for a minute. We do see, this seems to be a common thing in all these really big club shops, having a little stadium seating area. So, got like leisure wear stuff over there. I think upstairs is where you get the shirt printing and stuff done. We'll have a look up there in a little while. Um, I think they've got sale stuff, the other side of this little barrier. Lots of stuff on sale racks and then I mean, as you can imagine, just lots and lots of Liverpool branded merch. Do we want a hat? Shall I get a Liverpool hat? I am in the unique situation as a football manager content creator, but I'm not a Liverpool fan. All the rest of them seem to be. So there's not really anything in here for me. Got some nice hats. I just don't see myself wearing one ever. What would be not being a Liverpool fan? There is a rule. You can't buy, you can't buy merch for other clubs who play in the same country as you, that's not okay. It's all right for me to wander around in a Schalke gilet or have a Barcelona backpack. I can't wear a Liverpool hat. We've got all of the uh, kids' stuff around here. Mugs. I mean, if they have a mug with my name on, I'll be all over that. They just all say the word Liverpool on them, as you can imagine. Like homeware stuff over there. We've got posters and clocks and things. And then I think this is the queue for the till. So it's actually not quite as big as the one at Tottenham or Barcelona. Still pretty sizable. Get myself some you'll never walk alone underpants, maybe. I think I'm gonna kind of work my way around and get upstairs where I think is where the replica shirts are. I can get a skateboard. Will they let me in the stadium with a skateboard if I have it in an official club shop bag? Or some Liverpool rock. I don't think I've ever seen rock in a club shop before. Or a skateboard. It's more leisure wear stuff through here. There's all your scarves. Obviously, there was lots of scarves and things from the uh, unofficial vendors outside as well on the walk up to the stadium. So we've got loads of hats over there. There's a nice selection of hats. I am in Liverpool this weekend with Sheepdog. He's not coming to the match because the tickets cost an absolute fortune. 
if I only got myself one, that he is on the lookout for a hat. As a big Spurs fan, I think he'd appreciate a Liverpool hat, so I might get him one. So we have got, yeah, some discounted bits and bobs here, discounted jackets and shirts. They're actually pretty reasonably priced. Obviously, I'm not getting one, but some pretty good deals. Club shops on the last day of the season, good place to hang out if you're looking for a bargain. We've got trainers and football boots over there as well. I'm looking for, a, for an Arsenal baseball cap. They don't have that kind of selection at Arsenal, which is very upsetting. We're going up the escalator and we'll have a look to see what's, up, what's what up there. Got a whole fenced off area here. But here we have retro kits. That's actually quite a cool kit. I think that was the first one I remember Liverpool wearing when I was a kid. That's like the, oh yeah, they go, mid to late 80s. Certainly remember Crown's Paints as a sponsor and definitely the candy shirt as well. See, these are quite cool. I like the retro shirts. The uh, Carlsberg one as well. I remember all of these. I'm so old. So very old. That's a nice shirt. I don't remember that one, but it is a nice shirt. That, I quite like bright yellow, apparently. These are the... I mean, I, I think if I was ever going to get one, it would be... This is like your classic one, isn't it? This is certainly the one I remember most from when I was a kid. More crown paints up here. We're kind of getting older as we get up this end, and then we've got some really cool memorabilia bits and bobs. Finally found a sponsor from before my time, that's a good thing. Get a Liverpool branded kettle and toaster. All these signed shirts don't even, oh, I was gonna say they don't have prices on them, that one does. A John Barnes signed shirt, 325 pounds. It is nice. Robbie Fowler as well. More bits of us. Do I want a Virgil van Dyke statue? I kind of do. <laughs> I mean, if I was going to get anything from here, it'd be my boy. A signed Virgil poster. Multiple time streamer showdown winner, managed by yours truly. More hats and badges and retro shirts. Women's retro shirts there. And then... We've got some more signed bits of It's quite cool. It's a cool shop. The goalkeeper who must not be named. My rival, Jurgen. And then, oh, here we go. So these are quite cool. So current shirts, current squad signed, not framed. So it's actually probably better value to get your John Barnes ones from over there for 325 in a frame. I think I'd rather have that than a Canate one for 300, not in a frame. But what do I know, eh? Tiny little tracksuit. Can you imagine? And I think that's the queue over there to, to get shirt printing. In fact, are they selling next season's shirt here? They've got the 2023-24 home kit names and numbers up there so i speculate that maybe they're selling next season's shirt is this next season's shirt there with names and numbers on so that's why there's such a big queue up here so you can get the current one downstairs or next season's is on sale up here i don't know which one's the current one and which one's it's all very confusing for someone who's not massively been paying attention but i think most importantly we are heading our way back round to the staircase there's a cafe in here i don't think i've ever seen a coffee shop inside a club shop before absolute madness there's your name and number printing going on there which is cool to be able to watch uh, you can see what's going on outside from up here as well as the crowds continue to gather out there and i can get myself a little tent and a jug and a teddy bear and we have a, another view of over the top of the club shop here. Once we get to this staircase, we'll be able to have a little look at just how big this club shop is. There is a lot of it, for sure. So a very reasonable question that some of you may have is, Kev, how on earth did you get a ticket for Liverpool's last home game of the season? Aren't they impossible to get and very expensive? The answer to both of those questions, yes. 
I pretty much had made my peace with the fact I wasn't going to be coming at least to a league game this season and was going to try and cheat the rules by doing a pre-season friendly or something or maybe an away game. But then one of you lovely viewer folk got in touch with me and offered me his sister's ticket. I hope he's told his sister and hasn't just taken it from her, um, but he's going to be meeting me somewhere around here in the next 10 minutes or so. And then we're, we're going in and I've got to pretend to be his sister. We, I mean, I'm assuming the season ticket cards don't have photos on. It should be fine. The flip side of that, of course, is he might be lying or not exist, in which case, in a minute, you're going to see me doing a sad face and getting on a bus and heading back into the city centre to find a pub to watch the game in because <laughs> it's an hour before kickoff. And I don't have a ticket. It's fair to say it gets pretty busy around these parts in the lead up to kickoff, which is just over an hour away. I'm making my way around to the Kenny Dalgleish stand now, which is apparently where I'm gonna be. Still gotta find my guy though. Boys and girls, we are in. We have a sausage roll and this, is Anfield. There we go. I guess in a minute I'm gonna have to stand up for the uh, traditional photograph, back to the pitch and all that, but there we have it. It's warm and sausagey. That'll do. There's an enormous flag being passed in front of me at the moment. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how you see under that. I'm sure it'll be fine. We've got team news happening. I missed the start. Chris is going to put it here for you. It's quite loud in here. about 15, 20 minutes in, still no nil at the moment. Uh, Liverpool are definitely the better of the chances. It's quite interesting being able to sit here watching Trent play in this new little hybrid position of his where he's kind of half right back, half playing in an offensive midfield too. And pretty much all the decent moves have kind of come through him picking up the ball from the back three and then pinging it out wide. That noise was him giving away free kick though when he moved back to right back temporarily. Still nil-nil at the moment. It looks like Liverpool most likely to make a break through the game. And this might be my fault with the kiss of death, uh, but Villa have got a penalty. Almost immediately after I said Liverpool were going to make a break through, we have a Villa penalty. I don't think they want them to score the penalty here. This is quite whistly. I'll let you guess whether it goes in or not. over and it was just tucked in at the far post. We are about halfway through the first half, one ball to Villa. And now there's a VAR check for the uh, for the foul that led to this injury break. So we might be about to get a Villa red card. no red card. It's the first time I've been at a match that had a VAR check. Very exciting. Well, there we have it. Half time, eight minutes of time added on to that first half. It just seemed to go on and on forever. Uh, Liverpool were pretty much camped out on the edge of the Villa area throughout. There was a VAR check for a penalty that wasn't given. It remains 1 0 to us to Villa at half time. I tell you what, Ollie Watkins is a nuisance. I've not really paid much attention to 
Villa ever. But Ollie Watkins is pretty useful. Oh, well, here we go then, second half has begun. Nine minutes past four, because of how much time was added on in that first half, so I'm gonna try and ingrain that number into my brain so I can work out how much time is added at the end of the game as well. It'd be nice to see a Liverpool goal. We have an equaliser. Absolute chaos in the penalty area. They had about four attempts at it, but finally poked it over the line. Suspicions may be of offside, but they seem to be going back to take a kick off. The ref's gone over to the little telly. He didn't loop around into the other half the way they do on football manager. I suspect this is getting disallowed. I'm getting the full-on VAR experience today. Having not been at a stadium where this is going on before, this is weird and a bit rubbish. It takes forever. The referee is back from the monitor. And it's been disallowed. It did look offside, but it took them a long time to decide, so I suspect it was a close one. Still 1-0 to Villa, though. wasting which I guess he needs to pack it in a little bit now which is probably not ideal for Villa going into the last 15 minutes but we might spend less of the match with fans whistling at them for time wasting two minutes of normal time left there must be like 10 minutes to add on but it's all getting a little bit scrappy there was a long period of Liverpool dominance but now it's just a lot of lumping it forward they've kind of taken off the entire midfield just got a lot of attackers on Hitting it long looking for them, they're not really winning it. And it's just all got a little bit messy and a little bit all over the place. second yellow card for him and there's still must be five minutes left in this match Now, 
Liverpool have got a free kick. The only player anywhere near the Liverpool half is the goalkeeper. Everyone else is forward. If they score here, the roof is coming off this place. Straight into the hands of the keeper again. And there is full time, 1-1. One, one. Probably fair in the end. Villa with a better team in the first half. Liverpool utterly dominated in the second half. Villa, absolutely cheating rascals with all the time wasting. It ends 1-1. One, one. And now the stewards are all lined up just to make sure, with it being the last day of the season, that nobody ends up on this pitch. There we have it, 1-1. One, one. one of the louder environments I've ever been in a football match. Not quite Juventus levels, but it was pretty close. It occurs to me much later in the day that I actually forgot to end the video. I just kind of rushed to get away from the stadium. So this is me in my hotel room ending the video. And that is the, the lot for this season when it comes to match day vlogs. But there will be match day vlogs coming back again next season and sooner than you think as well, because I am planning on doing, and I still need to double check the logistics of this, so don't hold me to it yet, but if it starts, it's definitely happening, an FA Cup winner stays on series where I am going to start at the closest club to my house in the very first of the preliminary qualifying rounds. I don't even know who that would be. I'll have to figure that out and basically following them through the tournament and when they get knocked out from the next round i follow the team that beat them so basically i'll do a vlog from every round of the fa cup all the way through from the very first preliminary qualifying round through to the final and we'll have a team to follow all the way through because we'll be cheering on the the, the winner that stays on like i say we're working on the logistics but that's coming soon so if you're enjoying the match day vlogs Stay tuned for that kind of stuff. Make sure you subscribe, notifications on, all that kind of good stuff. And I will see you again very soon. Toodle pip. Do you like my draft hat, by the way? I do. Toodle pip. <laughs>